Um, I am a journalist uh, based in the UK, and um, I am here to moderate this session. This is the Tech Tools Rocking the Production Workflow session. Obviously, technology is changing everything, and it's particularly changing uh, things in the production uh, workflow uh, business. Um, given the sheer amount of digital data that's being uh, produced now, collaborative working is obviously becoming a huge buzzword, uh, and collaborative working tools are becoming increasingly important to all aspects of the production process. I'm talking pre-production, actually on set, and obviously post-production as well. Um, we're going to talk about cost issues. We're going to talk about legacy system issues. We've got standards issues with this. Thank you. We also have creative issues that need to be tackled with these um, kinds of collaborative tools. And we've got a panel here today who I hope will help us um, shed some light on some of these themes. So let me introduce them uh, to get us going. Far over the, on that side, uh, on the far side of the stage, we have Mark Kennedy. He's the CEO and co-founder of Celtix. Celtics is from Canada, or he's from Canada as well, and it offers pre-production software that works on personal computers, on devices, and increasingly in the cloud. We're going to be talking a lot about the cloud today, uh, so that's Mark. Uh, next to him, we have Gabor Kertoy. Gabor is uh, the founder, uh, CTO, of Production Minds. Production Minds is in Hungary, and his tool is a cloud-based creative collaboration tool for pre-production. Uh, and he tells me it's both for creatives and for office people. So you're not just dealing with creative people. You also want the office people as well on board, which is important. We'll talk about that as well. Next to him, we have uh, Yannick Hebor. He is the CMO of Easy Scott. Um, that is a German company. Easy Scott is a, uh, is a uh, metadata management tool. It's an on-set metadata management tool. Uh, and actually, he said it's a kick-ass tool. So that's obviously a technical term, kick-ass tool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. technical term. Uh, last but not least, we have Eddie Wineworm. And Eddie is the founder and CEO um, of Flavor Sis. I said it right. Hey, how about that? And it's a German company. Um, his product is called Strawberry, which I love, but it's a blue strawberry, right? So it really kind of, you know, freaks you out because you see this blue strawberry and you're like, what is that? Okay, it's an intelligent post-production collaboration tool. So what you might have noticed is we've got the whole spectrum up here. We've got pre, like at the script writing side, we've got on set, and we've got post. So we've got guys who are in all, let's say, aspects of the, of the, ch of the food chain, so to speak. So to get us started, um, what I'm going to do, everybody, so, most of us have a, have a clip, but not all of them. Um, Mark, we're going to start with you. Our first topic area, and I, and I want you to sort of introduce your clip when I do this. We're going to talk about how collaborative work tools are developing. Talk, to, talk a little bit about that, or do you want to just, I don't know, do you want to say something to cue your clip up and then, and then talk about it afterwards, or how would you want to do this? Well, our clip was um, victim of uh, overzealous <laughs> editing. It uh, was, actually. And it has everything <laughs> in it except anything to do with our software. So, um, <laughs> um, it's a sort of a missing. Yeah, that, that little part is missing. The, the part that's missing is just trying to demonstrate that the idea is to support the, um, the, the whole creative process um, while um, uh, you know, in onset uh, as well as before, and and do that in a collaborative manner, allowing people to work uh, the way they want to work with whatever device they want to work with, um, and that's uh, both uh, at the desktop level, uh, mobile devices, and as well as the cloud, in order to be able to coordinate all that between people. Um, particular challenge. Do you think we should show the clip or? What do you think? Uh, well, let's just sure. Why don't show the clip? Let's and, show the clip. And, uh, All right. So, so imagine that there's some tools involved in this. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Can we roll Mark's clip, please? <laughs> Interior warehouse night. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's best picture is Good Cop, Better Cop.
So, <laughs> yes. So obviously they won the Academy Awards. You, your tools must have done something Absolutely, right. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, it was actually done by a um, um, user of our software. Um, and uh, the part that's missing is right after they shout uh, cut. Um, then they go into a rapid um, evolution of making changes um, uh, while they're uh, actually shooting. And um, everyone's kept up to speed by virtue of um, all being hooked into the one project up in the cloud. So. And, your, and your tool really is at the script writing phase. It's at that, that very beginning moment. You can technically change things on a dime while you're actually in there trying to write the script or trying to shoot the script, right? I mean, for, for creative and, and the people in this audience, for producers in this audience, why, why is that such an important moment to well, have this collaborative tool? You know, the, um, the legacy, um, if you will, offerings uh, involved uh, proprietary data models yep. Yep. and uh, standalone applications that didn't talk to anyone else. And, and so the concept was, you, you know, you, you wrote your script, you printed it off, and then as people who are in the industry know, uh, went into script block, and then things got complicated with um, um, uh, multicolor pages and hues and all the protocol. And the whole thing was all, uh, you know, an attempt to try to address the weaknesses in the, in the tech that was available to people that are in the industry. Um, and so what we wanted to do was um, provide a whole system allowing everyone that's involved in that creative process to have a tool uh, to let them do their work, but that tool would be integrated with everyone else's tool, everyone else's work. Um, and you have to start with the script writing, though, um, and it has to be a good editor. It has to be something that um, writers find comfortable to use and, and find powerful. So, and everything gets hung off the, the script. I mean, it's the central document, mm -hmm. and um, every bit of metadata that gets collected is um, um, somehow or other related to that script. So if you don't have that at the beginning, it's gonna be really difficult to support the rest of the process. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not a, okay, we've written the script, and now we have the rest of the process. The script writing is the, entirely part of that whole process. And right it's iterative, because you may change, as you say, as you go along. Absolutely. Right. So Yannick, um, can I ask you to come in here? Yes. Um, there's obviously a lot of metadata out there. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of silos too. I mean, Mark sort of talked about this, you know, proprietary legacy systems. Yeah. So when we get into this sort of collaborative world, is that a huge issue for you? Well, yeah, as you, as you told, um, at the moment, the different departments used to work in silos. So we have the, the pre-production who is preparing the production. Maybe they're using tools or do it on paper or whatever. And then there's a stop and they print it all out and put it on the set and then they are shooting stuff and then they are, um, you're writing down stuff on paper again and then you're bringing the paper to the post-production right. where they have to um, uh, digitalize this mm -hmm. stuff again. So yeah, it is, it is an, um, an issue and really time-consuming thing that the different departments um, operate in silos at the moment. And yeah, I think the whole conference, the whole uh, trans for transfer media is, is trying to do is to, to kind of find a way to break down the silence, not even between departments, but also between software developers, uh, finding ways how to yeah. share information between mm -hmm. um, different software solutions, yeah. because there will not yeah. be the one and all software yeah. from pre-production to the post-production to just who does it everything. Yeah. But you have some specialized softwares for the post, for pre, for onset, and you have to find a way to make them talk to you. Exactly. So Eddie, come in here just for just quickly on this, because you are sort of at the end of the chain yeah. in terms of yeah. post-production. I mean, how is that? How do you see that working better? Do, is it is it a question of standards? Is it a question of, I don't know, translation languages? What needs to yeah, happen? Yeah, yeah, it, it's a quite complex question mm, because know. it, you know, every production st uh, stage has an, an it's a complex problem. And if you combine them together, you have a huge complex problem. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, mega complex, mega problem. complex <laughs> problem. Yeah. So, but what we usually do, we develop software, but actually we develop uh, complex software. <laughs> so we have again a complex problem with the complex software. And there is something I call Excel effect. It's uh, when you see the big companies, they're using these huge SAP systems, which can handle everything from input to output to production, whatever. And actually, um, the employees sending each other Excel worksheets. Yeah, mm. they Crazy. find ways around ways around because the the, the software product uh, has with thousand buttons and it's getting too complex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's some issue we also face in this industry. Yeah, that we uh, get products which really can do everything, 
in the end, but uh, uh, unusable. Mm. So Gabriel, let me come to you, and we want to we want to cue up your tape now as well. So you know, you're, he's just uh, hit on one of the issues that you think is a really big issue. If it's too difficult to use, particularly creative people aren't going to use it, right? I mean, you've got to make this right. stuff accessible. Yeah, well, you have to make it usable and user-friendly. Uh, that, that is a challenge that we are all facing with. But I, I share the same sentiment as uh, Yannick uh, brought up here, that uh, these tools should work together. And uh, there is a huge gap. I can see a huge gap. That's what mm -hmm. I, I set out to solve uh, in terms of pre-production. Mm -hmm. I, I have to tell you, I think the post people are doing way better. If you go to post and VFX, uh, you can see that most tools talk to other tools. You can mm -hmm. import files that you exported from another tool. This is completely missing uh, from pre-production right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something, uh, that's my long-term vision. We'd, we'd like to achieve, we'd like to create a platform that works with you know, as many other tools as possible. Mm -hmm. Because it, it just makes life so much easier for people. Yeah, so much easier and also probably cheaper. Do you, want, do you think this is a good moment to run your tape maybe now? Yeah, yeah. Please. Okay, so let's, can we run um, Gabor's tape, Production Minds tape, about what they do? Do you wish you could spend less time managing your production and more time being creative? Tired of digging through email threads to find those recce's or Excel sheets? We have the answer for you. Production Minds platform is an all-in-one solution for your pre-production needs. In PMP, we'll have everything related to your production in one central place. PMP is designed so you're following the natural workflow of any script-based production. PMP makes it easy to invite and involve your crew early in the production process. Teamwork has never been so easy. Forget chaotic email threads and only work on tasks relevant to you. PMP lets you collaborate easily with your crew without anyone ever missing an important decision, task, or deadline. Keep even the sloppiest crew members organized. Get the job done on time and on budget. Add, manage, and review your locations and talent easily. Need something from a production you worked on before? PMP remembers for you. Unleash your creativity with PMP's easy multimedia management. Drag and drop media files. Click and comment. Assign tasks. Share and discuss ideas, taking creative collaboration to the next level. Fed up with chasing files and looking for answers? Enough of working with a different system all the time? PMP gives you all your production management details in a secure cloud so you can communicate and work together easily. Plan, manage, and produce any script-based production with PMP. Production Minds. Ideas we share. Sign up for a free account today. I like the end there. Sign up for a free account today. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good marketing tool. <laughs> so, so just to follow on from that, um, Gabor, so, so, you know, really interesting. A lot of people said, oh, the cloud is going to solve all our problems. Once we can do all this in the cloud, it's all going to be fantastic. Has the cloud solved the problem? Well, it's, uh, it's going to solve our problem. It's going to uh, solve yeah, the problem, okay. Th there is uh, <laughs> definitely a trend. I, I don't think it has uh, solved all the problems yet. But uh, okay, I, I get asked a lot uh, about you know, cloud and why, why we go to the cloud. And what, what is the cloud anyway? I mean, in, in its simplest terms, uh, what, what is the cloud? It's somebody else's computer. So you store your <laughs> data on somebody else's computer, right? And the, the important part here is that somebody else is taking care of that computer and your data. It's like having your own IT department, as one of our customers said. It's mm. better because you don't have to pay for that. You know, not the whole price of an mm. IT department, but your monthly subscription only. Right. But uh, there are skilled people in the background uh, you know, taking care that everything runs smoothly and uh, everything works as, as you want it to. Mm -hmm. Mark, I mean, I know that your system most of your subscribers, I think, are on our PC laptop subscribers, but you also have cloud subscribers and you have mobile device subscribers. How do you see that whole thing developing? Is the cloud 
the answer or is that where everyone's going? Well, when, when we first started off, um, our concept was we were going to be web services, which is uh, what they called it before it got rebranded as right. the cloud. <laughs> as the cloud and, right. <laughs> and the first product we came out the door with was a pure web service offering. It was a database to track uh, extras, actually. Um, and the first feedback we got was, oh, no, no, I had to have save as. Um, uh, I had to have this local file I could keep on my own computer. And, and that was uh, quite reasonable given the time where um, the internet just wasn't as readily available as it is today. I couldn't you know, walk into a Starbucks or whatever and just uh, hook onto the internet. So we kind of dropped back a bit and because if you get too far ahead of your customers, well, what's the point? So, so we dropped back and we developed this sort of hybrid desktop application that was both a desktop software, but it also behaved like a browser mm -hmm. and was able to talk to a, mm -hmm. a web service, a cloud service. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what happened, of course, was the iPhone came out, you know, and then with that, the iPhone and the tablets and Android started taking off, and, and, and then you had, like, the, the Mac OS X store, and so next thing, and everyone wanted to be able to work on all these different devices, so the only solution, a sensible solution right now, and, and I suspect for the foreseeable future, is to have a cloud that's able to hook all that up, and, and it's like I said, it, it's an incredibly complex problem being able to share data between all these different devices and do it in a sensible way. And so you, you need some central hub to be able to handle this. So what we ended up doing was sort of uh, evolutionarily, we moved it, uh, along to the point where we could finally go to a full cloud offering. Mm. And so, you know, we have millions of users on the desktop software and, and we've got millions of users in the cloud now and we've got a large component of people on mobile devices. And the challenge for us is just trying to keep up with them. It's, um, it's trying to keep up with the fact that they want to use uh, every single device that's out there and all in teams and all mashing their data back and forth and, and I'm passing it over to you and you're passing it back to me and multiple editors on the same document and, yeah. and, and that's the real challenge. But um, I think that, uh, you know, and trying to keep up with the creative flow because right, it can be incredibly frenetic, you know. So, mm -hmm. So um, the tech is uh, always catching up to people uh, and trying to achieve um, the goal of providing that seamless, easy to use platform for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting problem, is it? So, so Yannick, you know, your, your software is sort of for onset stuff. When you hear this, I mean, he says, you know, it's frenetic out there, it's amazing. Is, the, is your idea of doing, getting this kind of collaborative work tool that works particularly for, in your case for the on-set experience, is this a way of basically saying we need, we need to put more money into that so we, so we don't have to have spent so much money in post, you know, sort of where at the end of the thing. Is, is that really the goal? Is it, is it to basically claw back money to be used more during the production or maybe in pre-production as opposed to in post, which is where I think most of the heavy lifting has happened in the past? Yeah, I mean, the, the initial idea, idea was to kind of kill this doubled work, mm -hmm. this, this doubled list. So because things, um, a production assistant was writing in his pre-production phase, a script supervisor, for example, had to write again. And yeah. afterwards, um, the assistant editor has to, to type these things again. And we just wanted to um, yeah, bridge these gaps mm -hmm. because um, we, we were focusing on onset because um, we are having the pre-production and many people working together in the pre-production, and then it comes all together to the, to the onset, what's really happening, you know, all the planning and stuff like this, mm -hmm. but then what's really happening on the set. And so we are trying to import any um, suitable information we can get from the pre-production um, to be available on set for the script supervisor mainly, so that you need, okay, what, what has been planned and stuff like this, and now I just enter what's really happening and then bringing this information um, seamless to the post-production mm. in a digital way via mm -hmm. the cloud, of course. Mm -hmm. So the cloud, the cloud is, of course, a good opportunity mm -hmm. to um, share information in a, in a seamless and mm -hmm. quick way. But um, as the others mentioned, it's um, also hard to have this rights management. Who has, uh, uh, who is the boss? Yeah. And in our world, the script supervisor is on set, the, the CMO, the chief mm -hmm. metadata officer, yeah? she okay. or he, uh, says this um, is scene one and no other one. No other one on the yes, you don't get multiple copies or people working on the wrong version mm -hmm. or something like that, which yeah, is a yeah. huge issue, I guess. Which is, yeah. Eddie, what do you think about this? I mean, is it, is it all about saving money in post? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, uh, of course, the, the big problem in post is that it's too cheap. The storage is too cheap, actually. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Keep everything. Yeah. <laughs> keep everything. And we have uh, <laughs> pentabytes of, 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 of material uh, lying around. And, uh, you, you know, uh, people uh, lose track of this. So they don't know what to delete. They don't know what to keep. Um, they don't know how to find some things and uh, how to collaborate with the things. It's really a huge problem and uh, the different approaches. Mm. And uh, our approach is to, to, to add some artificial intelligence behind this, which is uh, actually going into the recommendation system or, or something like this, uh, to uh, gather information from the material as much as we can. Mm -hmm. yeah, because uh, the classical old databases, as we know it from the, I don't know, 80s, this terminal, yeah. they are no more feasible for, for uh, assets or you know huge amounts of assets like this. Yeah. Mm. And it's just too many. In other words, too many. Yeah. yeah. So you really have to have, as you say, uh, some kind of intelligence in the system, right. some kind of search, I guess, right, capability. Right. right. So no one is entering uh, uh, to the internet some information in a database. Yeah. This is my website, and, and I don't know that's the topics and so on. No, Google is performing a f performing a full text search on this mm. on the on the on the web pages. Mm. So. Uh, but actually, uh, still in the broadcast, especially in the broadcast sector, you, you have uh, these classical old school databases, and uh, uh, they're getting much, uh, you're getting more and more uh, hard to handle, especially you're working with, with freelancers or not with archivists, uh, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. not experts on, on handling databases. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about cost before we go to your tape. So, so Mark, can I ask you, do you think that the budgeting um, process has gotten better? I mean, cost is obviously a huge issue for, for these kind of projects. Has budgeting gotten easier with collaborative work tools, or have we still got a huge... Well, I think so. And again, that goes back to the legacy software. Um, I mean, previously you had script writing software, you had some pre-visualization software, budgeting software, scheduling software, none of it talked to each other. Mm. Um, and, you know, if changes were made to the script, there was a very manual process, a second AD having to enter all that information back into their scheduling or their budgeting software. And, and, and you know, that's just ripe for error every time there's this manual intervention that uh, has to occur in order to be able to keep that other piece of software up to date on, on the changes that were made in, in the first piece of software. Yeah. That's just crazy. Mm. So <laughs> having it you know, integrated and all under one roof, so to speak, um, is a, a tremendous improvement. And, you know, um, we have a, a, a budgeting and scheduling that's all integrated in with the script and, and in with your, um, your assets. So. The idea is to, you know, the phrase he uses is to make it auto magic. Um, should be auto magically done for you. If I make a change to a asset, some prop item or a set item, and and that changes the cost in that, that should automatically rifle through and change right into the budget. Vice versa, if I change the schedule, that's going to affect my budget. It all drives down to the budget at certain points, yeah. and making that really easy um, for people to um, to see happen uh, is the key. But you know the the curious part, the the difficult part is, um, you still need uh, the, to enable people to go in and then manually adjust the budget. So yeah. so they'll <laughs> so they'll do it all over here, and then you'll have it all automatically take care of it for them. But they'll go, ah, uh, yeah, but I still need to make this change down here. So so it's it's a really challenging you know a problem to provide this. Um, automatic behavior, but at the same time allow the individual, the user, to go in and make their own special tweaks at different mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when they do that, it's got to rifle all backwards again. Yeah. So if I go in and make a change to the budget that, that affects some asset, that's got to go all the way back down into the catalog and affect the asset as well. Yeah. So, um, but we're getting there. There's no doubt that we're getting there, mm -hmm. and um, and that people really like it when it works well. Yeah. You know, that it makes her, makes her lives a hell of a lot simpler. Yeah. Um, and it's just taking that, you know, the the uh, it's getting the, the uh, that that individual and individuals, the team members, to adopt, mm -hmm. to say, well, you know, it doesn't have this and doesn't have that, which are, are things like I'm used to using in paper, but ultimately the benefit exceeds that little bit of loss yeah. that they incur mm. by virtue of um, uh, taking that new approach. So Gabor, when you look at this, um, you know, this it sounds like a really big issue, right? And particularly getting creative people to understand budgeting because they want to be creative. Is this something that, that you're finding you're able to address with your collaborative tool or is it still a really difficult area? For them to understand budgeting, well, that's well, a, I don't know. To yeah, maybe, tricky question. Maybe uh, they don't need uh, to. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if they need to. Uh, 
But uh, what, what you have to see here is uh, Mark had this uh, beautiful example when we talked earlier about how budgets are shrinking, uh, the cost per minute. Do you have that, those numbers? Yeah, well, um, Spider Man, as just an example, was about, um, it worked out to about $2 million a minute. The, um, spider, the latest Spider Man. Latest Spider Man, yeah. Marvel Spider Man. And um, when you start going down the scale of um, like HBO shows or AMC shows, then it works out to like $6 million a show, $4 million a show. Um, and then you get down to the multi channel networks like YouTube uh, driven stuff, and that's about a thousand bucks a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so you got cheaper. $2 million a minute, a thousand bucks a minute. Right. So you can see this incredible cost pressure. That's that's you know uh, um, injecting itself into the industry, and so the idea that you can put up with waste and duplicity and inefficiencies, and but still the product's really great. Well, that's just not going to fly. You know, um, you should be able to get every penny up on the screen, and um, and the way to do that is to to uh, eliminate all those redundancies and inefficiencies, um, which is driven an awful lot by paper. If you're you, if you're doing a, a large project and you're still Use lugging around three ring binders, then you're wasting money. You're just burning the money uh, That's right. right there. And it's it's not only shrinking budgets uh, because of these new platforms. It, it's also different people producing content. Mm. So uh, the people producing content for YouTube may not be you know trained filmmakers as you would traditionally think of uh, filmmakers, uh, and they're less disciplined. Mm. Uh, also, the way you you make decisions today with your smartphones in your pocket is very different. You, mm -hmm. you make very quick, snappy decisions that affect what you have to execute. And uh, the way you communicate, what I, I keep experiencing is that uh, the ability to communicate quickly makes you somewhat lazy mm -hmm. in your communication, and it gives you the illusion that you communicated clearly mm -hmm. when you did not. Yeah. And uh, that means uh, when you have an idea of a change, and directors and DOPs do, and they, they're sitting at a bar, and they come up and, ah, OK, let's use a dog instead of a cat in scene five, whatever. <laughs> it's easy. And they text to the AD, and they think, OK, it's done. Uh, it's not done, because there will be people on your crew who still work on the dog version or the cat version, whatever. So they're working on a different version of the movie that you're trying to execute. And the more you do this, the more people and the more different versions of the movie uh, that people are working on. So mm -hmm. that's, I think, why you need a, a common platform where you kind of openly, OK, with you know, certain access uh, restrictions, but you share information and, and changes and decisions. Mm -hmm. And everyone can look at it and decide if, uh, OK, is this affecting my department? Uh, does this have a budget effect? Does this have a creative effect? How can I respond? Mm -hmm. So that helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. so what do you think, Eddie? Is that about right? That basically we've got to get rid of the versions and use a collaborative tool to make sure that we get the right, the right dog and not the cat in the picture. <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, as, I, as I said before, it's, it's, it's complex. And yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the reason why we are four and we are talking together. And we, 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 we talk a lot about the metadata and how to share it between our tools. And yeah, that's, that's one of the uh, uh, future steps to come in the industry, software industry, to really to be able uh, to share get the a data. collaboration yeah. from, from the early beginning to the, to to the, the end. end. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think that's probably one of the biggest issues, right? And there's no real standard at the moment for that. I mean, is open architecture the answer, Mark? Well, you know, there's open standards, uh, and that sure helps. Um, if there was some agreement on, um, and this will, you know, don't get too geeky here, but if there was some agreement on the, on just the schemas that are being used to um, to uh, capture data. Um, that would help a lot. Then you could. It would be much easier to move your data from one piece to the other um, without having these, you know, interpretive layers having to do the job for you. Right. Um, and I think you know the the impediment though is just getting people to let go of the paper, and um, and start to use computers, mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> and and use them in a you know modern tools right yeah. that yeah. enable them to do it and. What, what we find curious is that, you know, our, our most, um, um, the, the users who are the happiest using our software uh, don't traditionally come from, um, uh, from the film industry, um, and they're not, or, and, and from the traditional filmmakers. 
These are outfits that are um, typically much more cost driven, the advertising agencies, professional video production companies, mm -hmm. um, who weren't as hung up on the, you know, the tools that they were already using. They were looking for an efficient way to make this because it's very cost driven. And, and once they latch on to that, okay, this is the way to do this, and, and they'll never look back. They'll never go back to, to using three ring binders and, mm -hmm. and old legacy software. Um, so th the efficiency is just generated automatically just by virtue of using a modern tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's interesting about, you know, sort of the ad, the ad agencies and, and the people that maybe have a different mindset are actually using these tools quicker or more easily. Does anyone, has anyone had that experience? Yeah. Ja Yannick, you've had that experience? Um, you know, the, the funny thing is that um, the whole fil film industry, uh, from the outside, for the end customer, um, mm -hmm. uh, consumer, he always thinks the film industry is fast forward and totally modern and stuff. But the, the tools we're using is 20 years ago or mm -hmm. stuff like this. Um, on the other hand, um, some kind of agencies who are producing some short movies, some commercial, um, they, are, yeah, they are more into like using a collaborative tool because they know, okay, there are many people we have to talk mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. together to get the final script and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Of course, these are smaller projects and it's easier to implement. But yeah, here the film industry still has to, as you said, it get rid of the paper. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the paper. That should be our, <laughs> our tagline. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're right, uh, commercials are, are very fast paced. Uh, you have to execute quickly. And uh, we see the same trend, exactly. So, uh, also, uh, many times uh, they are executed internationally when you're you know, geographically spread out. Uh, mm -hmm. Your DOP is shooting something else while you're prepping, uh, your director is doing something else. And they're in different cities, even different countries. And uh, well, the cloud helps, obviously. In this yeah, the season. cloud helps. Yeah. <laughs> Just as long as you don't have huge cloud costs in terms of you know, getting it from point to point. I always think that the broadband issues are, are not something insignificant when you're talking about cost. Or is that something you haven't really had well, a problem well, with? You would have had the broadband issues with uh, that amount of data. We, we don't so much. I mean, it's actually, you know, no. No, you no. really haven't. No, it's just. Because the cost this is, is just going down, down, down. It's going on and on, but, uh, you know. Actually, the, we provide some feature like editing on the, on the, on the iPad in the past year, but actually no one is doing it. It's, it's good to sell, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, why aren't they doing it? Just because they don't want to work I don't that know, way? Because it's risky in the bathtub. That, uh, <laughs> it's risky in the bathtub. They might drop their <laughs> iPad. Right. Okay. No, well, that, know, that's but, a reason. Uh, actually, yeah, it, we in the post-production world, we're we are a step further. So we, we, are, we don't use so much paper anymore, but uh, we, we have this... this button, uh, I don't know, evolution that, uh, that there's every uh, generation of software is a new button and, and you can just look in there and in, a, uh, in software like, I don't know, um, simple Photoshop software, yeah, it, this is really getting a science uh, so mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, that's something we need to focus again in, in, in the post-production sector to really uh, uh, develop software not for the technician um, and not for the production but really for the end user and uh, yeah, I, li I like the, li I like the mm -hmm. iPhone and you know, th mm -hmm. there's something really stupid on the iPhone to, to do, like changing the, you type a number and then you made a mistake on the second <laughs> digit. Um, do you want to change this? It's, it's awful to do because you have to copy it, paste it in, the, in a text editor, copy it back and so on. And, but why? Because it's better to, to how often do you, do you need this? Very mm. seldom. Mm. And the most thing you need is to call some c contact you have and, mm -hmm. or some text message. And, uh, but why to do a special button for this? And I'm often telling, uh, I don't know when we, we have to pick uh, broadcasters as, and, and they want, yeah, and can we have a button to inform this and this department about that? And then I'm saying, okay, you have the phone. <laughs> yeah, you have the phone, yeah, right. Pick up the telephone. Pick the phone, yeah. because, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you're working more and more with freelancers, yeah. and uh, you can't have an, an, an university for them. They come in and uh, then they make a two-day uh, course about how to use all this software. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. Mm. And so you think it's getting too complicated, some of these collaborative tools. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to so, sort of strip it back, right? Or we're going to get into a situation right. we, where we, we have to, nobody you know, can use it. The water can't uh, uh, flow upward, yeah. So water can't it, flow uphill. Can't, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's, that's exactly the the the, 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 the excellent effect. Yeah. In the end, they're sending each other word documents. Yeah. If 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 it's too complex. Mm -hmm. That's probably true. Um, uh, Yannick, let's talk to you for a little bit because I want to cue up your tape. So we're going to talk 
a little bit about what's coming next. You know, what are the, the big tools that are on the horizon? Your tool is focused on the onset data management. So do you want to say something to queue it up or should we just run the tape? No, yeah, um, the table will say it, onset metadata management, uh, metadata management with the purpose to um, close the gap between set and post-production mm. to basically start editing right away because all the information from the script supervisor can di directly import it to the editing tools and no more paperwork. Um, and on the other hand, as um, you mentioned it, metadata is a, is a huge there are so many metadata. Mm. And if people look at metadata, they say, oh my god, <laughs> it's so much. And the, the, the challenge was to, to make metadata usable for, for the people on set who are totally no technicians, the script supervisors. Um, and as you see, we, we uh, fetch technical information out of cameras with this box. Mm. Uh, and, but which information do we display to the script supervisors? Just the clip name. We do not display TC start, stop, lens, uh, frame rate, whatever, because she's, she doesn't care. We're just displaying that what she needs. And that's uh, something we, when we are um, talking about collaboration between tools, um, we, we uh, must find a way to not share everything, mm. but just share the, the sensual. The important uh, thing. The important thing. Or the, yeah. the essential, yes. The, the essential, essential thing that yeah. actually that person needs to see. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, you know, have that little thing. It'll collect everything, I assume. Everything. But, but you don't want to show everything because that'll just, everyone, it'll blow everyone's mind, right? They'll be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know, this, this box would be able to record some kind of um, um, frame rate or uh, lens data for every frame the camera was recording. But um, actually, we don't have a use case for someone who wants to use this information. F maybe some 3D uh, thing where you can really have to match frame accurate uh, camera positions. But actually, we hide this information just mm until someone comes up who wants to use it. Mm -hmm. That sounds sensible. All right. Do you, let, do you want to run your tape yeah, now? Yeah, please, yeah. Please. Let's, run, um, let's run the tape. Uh, this is the uh, Easy Scott tape, please. In the past, every film production suffered a huge time loss between film set and editing room. Script supervisors had to write down important content-related information by hand and then send it to the post-production. There, someone had to transcribe, which means digitalize the whole thing into some editing tool to match up information and the respective clip. EasyScout solutions supersede these time-consuming steps. By applying our easy-to-handle script supervising app, all information is saved digitally right away. Optionally, place an ambient master locket on top of the camera to send important technical information directly to the app. Like this, the clips and the respective content information are matched immediately. This means no more paperwork. The app generates all reports automatically, always consistent and customized. You can either forward these reports directly via the app or download them online from the EasyScout web access. This is, by the way, where the magic happens. The editor downloads our so-called metadata files and puts them directly into his editing software. All information from the set matches up with the material and also the clips are renamed automatically and you can start editing right away. It's super obvious. EasyScot connects office, set and editing big time for a smooth exchange of information. And this was only a small sample. Find out everything about the world of EasyScot online at easyscot.com. Great. <laughs> Great. Very good explanation. So, um, you know, what, what do you see as the, the next generation of tools? You know, where are we going next? I don't know if you want to come in or if somebody else wants to. Whoops. I don't know what that is. It's a nice clip, though. <laughs> well, um, the thing is that we, are, um, we were trying to, to gather all this information right where they come up, which mm -hmm. means on set. At the moment when we're talking about metadata, you're entering them afterwards. Like in the post-production, they're sitting some right. poor intern or whatever mm. who has to fill in the archives and yeah. uh, typing in metadata yeah. where it was. Yeah. And we are collecting now any metadata right where they come up on set mm -hmm. and break them down to every clip. Mm. So you know now for every clip who is produced on set where it was produced, when, which, t which year, which daytime, mm -hmm. which cast member were in it, who mm. shot it, mm -hmm. which scene slate take, what was the director's information and stuff like this. And since you're now um, having tools to where you know really what each clip has um, as a content information, um, there are more possibilities uh, 
to think about new tools for the, for the post-production. Right. Um, I think when we're talking about cost effectiveness and everyone wants to save cost, I think in the, the post-production area there will be the most changings in the next um, five to ten years. Mm -hmm. Because on the one hand we have now um, cloud-based editing solutions um, like Strawberry, um, where the um, location doesn't matter anymore. So the editor can basically um, sit at home. Mm. Um, so the just not in the bathtub with the iPad. Just not the bathtub, right. but yeah, some kind of kitchen table or whatever, <laughs> yeah, it would, yes. would work. Um, so uh, the production, post-production houses, they don't um, need this big, big infrastructure anymore. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you're um, having on-set metadata management like ours, where you can really um, al allocate the information directly uh, with the clips. So there is no more um, uh, that you don't need that much time uh, anymore to prepare an editing. Mm -hmm. So you don't need this administrative area where you can prepare uh, an edit for the final, for the cutter, for the mm -hmm. editor. Mm -hmm. for the yeah, and on the other hand, if you're if you're looking at your uh, Android smartphones, um, if you're shooting uh, with your Android smartphone some some single clips, then this uh, this native tool it also it has the possibility to um, propose a, a rough cut mm. to you. It automatically analyzes uh, the stuff <laughs> and uh, proposes a rough cut. So that's also something that may come. So that. Um, after set, after after the shooting ended, you could automatically kind of um, produce a, a rough cut, and then the the editor just does the artificial stuff mm -hmm. and does and makes it mm -hmm. look good. Mm -hmm. So um, post production houses, I don't know how it will develop, but maybe they will have to um, kind of reinvent their business models in the next five to ten years. So, but. Uh, what, um, so it doesn't matter anymore that much the infrastructure they are offering or the administrative layer they were offering, but um, what will count is that they will have the best editors, mm -hmm. of course, the most creative editors. Yeah. And um, maybe they will be some kind of metadata consultants and they will have to assemble tools like ours for, for the best workflow for this specific production. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's kind of what they were doing because in the post-production that all comes together. Yeah. All right. So Eddie, you're our post-production guy. Do you see this? I mean, basically what uh, Yannick's saying is, uh, you know, the post-production tanker, in other words, the big, big post-production houses are going to have to change. They're going to have to change their business model. They maybe change what they actually do. Do you mm. see that as the future? No. No. <laughs> Post-production tankers are in. No, post-production tankers, you know, but what's a tanker? I, I guess uh, in the post-production, um, there were the biggest changes, or there were the earliest changes to, to the technology, uh, non-linear editing and so on. So they were the very first in the entire industry using computers, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, it's quite sophisticated, and actually uh, people want to sit on the edit because you have the atmosphere and, and, and it's nothing you do. You know, you can make a rough cut somewhere, at home, but uh, actually the editing is, is is taking place there, and and the film industry is is all time also a little bit about ceremony and about uh, you know hocus pocus uh, themselves and and the need these places to gather together and worship the the tape the tape <laughs> <laughs> worship the pictures yeah the pictures I should say not yeah, the tape yeah. I still call it tape yeah. the digital images the digital images <laughs> so you don't have a you don't actually have a, a tape or a digital image for your to no. talk about um, uh, flavor sis but what is it that you know what is it that you're doing with strawberry that maybe is different than what some other uh, collaborative tools for post are doing um, I guess um, we are very close to the end user. Mm -hmm. As we try to, I, you know, I have this uh, all the time this discussions with my product managers uh, about, as I told before, about buttons. Yeah, mm -hmm. can we make this button there? Yeah, and they say no. And uh, um, this is actually a big discussion, and, and for us, it's it's uh, you know, I'm, I'm all the time watching their other products, and actually they they have this I don't know nuclear. <laughs> power, uh, I don't know, bringing up some power, not this feature, and I have this feature, and I have this feature, and this right. feature, and this feature, and in the end, they, 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 yes, as I said, they produce some unusable product, and we try to solve all these uh, complex um, workflows in the, in the post-production mm -hmm. in an easy way. Mm -hmm. So, put a lot of, of, uh, of, of cleverness and a lot of software behind it, mm -hmm. but don't show it to the user. Right. So we have a very clean interface and we, we, try, we provide Google-like search for assets. So one single line and um, 
we try to think as much <laughs> for the user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, you that's, can. That's as, as we can, yeah. And, and really use new technologies and, and, and uh, yeah, all this data mining stuff, it's, it's getting more and more interesting uh, as I told, yeah. Storage is cheap and, and you keep everything, but you have to find it. Yeah. Let's uh, open up for questions to the audience. If you have a question, please put your hand up. You've got, these are some guys who know a lot about technical tools. If you're a producer or someone who wants to ask a question, I see. I think I see a hand back there. It's hard to see. So it's, it's important for the, the different software. He's going to bring a mic because we can't hear you. So just do, wait two seconds while Peter gets to you. Thank you. And who are you, please? Uh, my name is Toby. I'm from the University of Portsmouth. Hi, Toby. Creative Technologies. Um, you say it's important that the different softwares need to communicate. Um, we have four different softwares on stage here. How is the communication? Uh, between your softwares. I thought they communicated pretty well together on stage. Do you, do you, yeah. Does your software communicate, or do we need different, uh, different things to happen, yeah. Mark? That's a fair question. I think, you know, the, we don't. Uh, we don't communicate with each other at this point. Um, it's not for philosophical reasons, at least from our perspective. Um, so that we're not against it, you know, ideologically. It's just a matter of uh, this was a really big problem to solve. So you had to... Um, develop, you know, your own offering first before you could start to see how you could integrate that offering in with other offerings. Um, and uh, but we've we I, I know that underneath in our own architecture we've kept it um, all you know standards based um, systems so that w when the, you know the the uh, time came we could do that um, that we wouldn't. The, the other party wouldn't be forced to try to um, uh, use your proprietary data formats uh, mm -hmm. in order to be able to integrate with your software. So I think that that's coming. Um, and I think that the sort of new breed of technology that's out there have all kept that in mind, um, because they know that that's the future. Eddie. Actually, at the moment, this collaboration is mostly customer driven. So we have customers that have this tool and they want to use our tool. And so both companies have, um, it's, it's standard to have APIs, so open interfaces to talk to each other. So the, the, the communication is theoretically possible. So we have to implement this. And that's at the moment how, uh, um, how we communicate and, and how we integrate, um, you know, the, we talked a lot about standard uh, standards uh, yesterday evening. Yeah? So um, standards are good, but you have to implement them. And there are some companies which avoid standard because they want to keep their uh, I don't know uh, ecosphere together and, yeah. and don't let anyone in. And there are other companies which would adopt standards, but you know it, it's all about cost of software development. If I implement some standard and I'm throwing out my own standard. Um, it costs me something, and yep. I have to have a, a business reason to do so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one of the sticky issues. There's another question from the floor. Yes, Peter? Kate, if you don't, sorry, hello? Uh, Kate, if you don't mind. Um, we're not talking about technology, but it's a people's business. My experience as a production manager is that all your great tools you are offering, one has to use them and uh, the question for me all the time is, who in the production is doing this exactly? Who are you addressing with your tools? Is it the production manager? Is it the DIT? Is it the mm. data wrangler? Is it the cameraman? Mm. My experience is everyone somehow says, I can do this, <laughs> but maybe he has 15%, 20% of the knowledge. But it's also like, you need somebody who leads the people into it. What is your experience about this? So who, I, I have who a, are you targeting? <laughs> this reminds me, I have a sweet uh, story about this, if I may. Uh, you go. Uh, we do these uh, customer interviews uh, once uh, a project wraps, and uh, we, we call customers and ask them how it went and what we can improve, what they like, they dislike, etc. And uh, in one of these uh, discussions, uh, there's an AD, uh, Marta, uh, who I talked to a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she's lactose intolerant, uh, so this is very personal for her. She takes uh, very special attention. She, she cares very much about, you know, for all crew members to have the proper catering when right. they're on set. Right. And uh, she said that, uh, you know, actors appreciate it a lot when, when she calls and asks uh, about diet and all. And uh, she was saying, you know what, they appreciate a lot more when I get it right without having to ask them. 
And she could not do this uh, without you know, a reusable database, a central company database. That's what makes this possible. And I think you asked about the future as well. Uh, uh, this is mundane. And I personally, I love mundane. And uh, I think the future is trying to solve as many of these mundane problems uh, in, in film production as, as possible. Mm -hmm. so. so which person on the set do you think oh, should uh, be using the tools? <laughs> using the tools for our buying the tools. What do you, what ah, you mean? Ah, question, different <laughs> question. <Design tool. laughs> who's going to spend Peter the money and who's going to use it? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, for me, as a production manager, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a production. I mean, we, we are even writing on the script uh, where we are sitting together with the camera department and with the uh, post-production department and with the director and, of course, with the producer to decide how to do the workflow. So now I am deciding, according to my budget, what kind of technologies I'm using for this workflow. So, but then, uh, my, um, my experience is that most of the production managers d doesn't know these technologies and they do not know how they work mm. and they do not know how to bring them together because I have one in the pre-production, one in the uh, on-set production, one in the post-production. I can bring them together, no problem. It's te technically possible. But um, my experience is that the pro production manager itself cannot do this decision and then he relies on the person who gives him the feeling that he is mostly... Um, he, he knows most about this uh, technologies, which is mainly the DIT. And then they send him to the set, or the data wrangler, those, the, the guy who is with the data all the time. Mm -hmm. said, just do it for me. <laughs> I, uh, and then in the end, what happens is uh, we are getting a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a DVD. <laughs> oh, how new technology, yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Eddie. You, you asked me about this, or you mentioned the blue strawberry, yeah? Yeah. and that's, that's, uh, this is our communication problem, or no, it's, it's a challenge we have. Uh, we're addressing all these people. We're addressing the production, we're addressing the IT, and we're addressing the creatives. So we have a strawberry before the creatives, yeah. And it's blue, like IBM for the tech guys. So <laughs> we have, it's actually uh, our conversation we have every day with the different departments, and uh, we have to bring them all uh, on one line, and we have to, to, to present them the product in, in other ways and other ways to communicate. And for some, love the diagrams, and, and other, you know, if you show them a diagram, they run away. Um, yeah, that's so our it, challenge. Is it, is it production manager education that we need to have here, guys? I mean, do you Integrate need to? I think, you know, I think it's a generational issue yeah. in part. Um, I think, um, you know, if uh, you're under, I can say this as a very long in the tooth myself, but if you're under uh, uh, 25 years of age, um, you're already thinking this way. You already do this. Um, yeah. You know, I joke if you if you give a 22 year old a big thick three ring binder full of paper with highlighters, they're going to think you lost their mind. <laughs> and um, so they're already using these modern tools. So you you don't need an education. We see this coming out of the schools, out of universities, and uh, and even high schools. And uh, it's everyone. Um, if I, if I'm a props person or a set person. Um, I want to be, use, be able to use my computer to be able to do my work. And I'm just looking for a tool that's suited to that purpose. Um, and so I think, you know, that's the team part, right? It's, it's uh, everyone jumping on board at the same time. Um, so I, th I think that that's going to change. Uh, it's, um, and and people, people need to recognize that there's uh, something to be gained by changing their work behavior, you know, and which is a really tough one. I mean, everybody has, hates change, right, mm -hmm. with, the, with the passion, so. So, Yannick, we need this generation to die, basically, is that the problem? <laughs> yeah, no, not, not to die, basically, <laughs> just to retire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, get no, their, or get their 20-year-old to tell them how to do it. No, yeah. But uh, on, on the one hand, you have the, the people on set um, using the tools and stuff like this. For example, script supervisors like the app very much because it saves them time as well. Yeah. But I can't make them pay for that. Um, because mm. they don't earn <laughs> yeah. that much, mm. um, so it is. It, it, it should be the production managers um, who who will have to get some some knowledge of what tools are available, and they have to um, kind of assemble them before a production. Because if different departments search for their own tools and work, then then we have the same problem as well. Then we're having, again, silos, just digital silos. Mm. So you still have to have some, some kind of chief metadata officer 
which which may, may mainly would be the production manager or the post production manager yep. whoever wants to do that yep. um, to search for the tools assemble them and yeah let the team work uh, say say to the team you have to work with this one mm. i think it's a very go ahead you have one well, last thing to say, to say i think the one of the catalysts for for the change will will be the recognition that if you if you use these tools um, especially in the pre-production side of it and you're you're collecting all that metadata all that story information mm -hmm. that there's ways to leverage that to um, um, to build your audience yeah and um, and that's not really possible now unless you go through again a whole manual process of pretending that you're taking all this from the pre-production process and putting it up on a website. But if you can do that automatically, then mm -hmm. boom, yeah. it saves time. But but more than that, it's a new um, tool. Yeah, it's that, a new engagement tool. It's a new monetization tool. tool it's like absolutely. the bonus DVD type idea. Exactly. Right. And okay. um, and. That's where you start to see this tremendous yeah. leverage that you can start to pull out of yeah. the uh, out of the collection of the data itself yeah. in, when it's in a, in a form that allows you to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. This is obviously a really rich area, and I think we've uh, I hope we've uh, hit on a number of things that will have helped the audience. Could you please join me in thanking our tech tools rocking the production workflow panel, Mark, Gabor, Yannick, and Eddie. <laughs> Great. Okay, I'm going to pass over to you. Yes, great. Thank you, guys. You want to pick?